Thank you, Chair. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Ms. Thomas, there are harms and benefits at school. There are harms and benefits in life generally. Claude Mellons, Professor of Medical Psychology in the Departments of Psychiatry and Socio-Medical Sciences at Columbia University stated this, quote, for young people, social media provides a platform to help them figure out who they are. For very shy or introverted young people, it can be a way to meet others with similar interests. Social support and socialising are critical influences on coping and resilience, providing an important point for, of connection. On the other hand, during COVID fever, fewer opportunities for in-person interactions with friends and family meant less of a real-world check on some of the negative influences of social media. Isn't the professor making an important point? It's not about stopping real-world interaction. It's about balancing social media with real-world interaction. Isn't it about a balance, not about prohibition? And isn't it also the fact that parents are, and, and are better than governments, parents, not governments, are the best to decide how, how their children uh, develop? Yeah, thank you for the question, Senator. I think you're speaking to that idea of balance that a lot of us have been trying to refer to, that we are acutely aware of the harms, and I think they're beautifully captured in that quote, and acutely aware of the, the risks that we may create new harms by cutting young people off. Um, I think this is a really important point, and I'd just like to give you one example, um, a quote from a young person, Reese from Tamworth, who commented that, Social media has helped me figure out and become comfortable with my sense of self. Is that as, as there is a large community that is able to connect me with people all over the world. Living in a regional area, it's difficult to find people dealing with the same personal developments, and social media really helped. This is beyond just direct mental health intervention. This is about finding other people like you. This is about finding spaces where we can affirm ourselves and use our voices and mobilise around actions that we care about, just like we're all doing here today. So I just, I'd love to point out that um, the Office of the eSafety Commissioner has done some fantastic research into the experiences of specific groups, those uh, who are First Nations, LGBTQIA plus Australians and disabled and neurodivergent young people. All of these groups face greater uh, hate speech online. Actually, belonging to one of these communities, I can say that we also face greater hate speech offline. But what was really important is they also found that young people in these communities that already face marginalisation are more likely to seek emotional support, not just mental health support, connection, news and information, including information about themselves and the world around them. So I take your point. Thank you. Uh, another quote from Deborah Glassifer, Associate Professor of Clinical Medical Psychology at Stanford University. Quote, whether it's social media or in person, a good peer group makes the difference. A group of friends that connects over shared interests like art or music and is balanced in their outlook on eating and appearance is a positive. In fact, a good peer group online may be protective against negative or in-person influences. Is this bill throwing out the good with, with the bad instead of trying to improve support and digital media skills to allow children and parents to handle these trials better? I think there is a risk of that, yes, and I think we really need to, in a much lo uh, longer and more thorough time frame, interrogate and weigh up all of these risks and unintended possible impacts. I'd like to draw another quote from Lamisa from Western Sydney University. You spoke about influences. We tend to imagine those being solely negative. Lamisa says, social media has given me creators who are people of colour, and I think it has really allowed me to learn that I don't have to justify my existence, that I'm allowed to have an opinion, and that I'm allowed to have a voice about who I am. So absolutely, I think that there's a risk that we throw out these experiences. In our desire to protect people, we end up creating unintended harms that they have to live with. I've just received a text message from someone in this building, a fairly intelligent person, and he said, I was born with a rare disorder. I spent more than four decades feeling isolated until I discovered people with the same disorder on social media. This legislation would prevent people from under 16 from linking with the communities online that can provide them with shared lived experience. What do you say? I'm going to give you one more quote. I'm just aware young people aren't in the room, so I'm sorry I'm <laughs> citing these references. Hannah from Sydney. Where I struggled in the physical world thanks to a lack of physically accessible design and foresight by those, in responsi those responsible for building our society, I thrived online. For so many young people, they the, the digital world has created up so, so much opportunity for them to participate and fully realise their opportunities. We just need to be very careful 
I know in talking about all these benefits, I'm probably going to receive an immediate response about some of the harms. I'm not here to say the harms don't exist. They do. If anyone is aware of them, I started, I've been working in this space for 20 years. I started Project Rocket because I wanted to tackle these issues as a young person fresh out of school. We know they're there, but we have to be very careful not to, you know, impact these positive benefits young people face. And isn't there, Ms. Ms. Thomas, Senator very Roberts important access to question. parents, grandparents rather, on, on, um, for their support and experiential interaction with social media. A lot of children interact with their parents through social media, the yeah. grandparents. Am I allowed to answer this one? Yep. Cool. Um, I think one of the big grave concerns around implementation and enforcement is that it won't be just be young people who are needing to verify their age um, online. It will be every Australian. And when we think about the methods available, every Australian sharing up biometric data or presenting a government-issued ID, this is going to pose challenge for those Australians that you're talking about, older Australians who are already facing high rates of digital exclusion and those from... <clears throat> excuse me, marginalised communities. So absolutely, you know, this is a vital tool for grandparents and kids for intergenerational play and learning, and we risk cutting young people off, but also cutting older people off as well. Thank, Thank you, you, Ms Thomas. Thank you, Chair.